I want to teach you a new song, the song of Zachariah. I want you to all remember what Zachariah means. It means remembered of Yah. When God remembers somebody, the main thing is he wants you to know he hadn't forgotten us. He's still mighty much on the throne. Everything's going real good. So let's just get right to it. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Revelation chapter 15. There are basically three songs that are very important because they have to do with the end times. They have to do with the control of our Father. And that makes it very important. Okay, So here in Revelation chapter 15, let's pick it up with verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Meaning, when that's done, it's over. Now, what you want to always remember, God's not angry at you. God is not angry at anyone that loves him. It's quite the contrary. It's the enemy that's got to sweat. Okay. And they have ample reason to need to sweat. Verse 2, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. That means purity, and our Heavenly Father is a consuming fire. That consuming fire to you is the Holy Spirit that touches you and warms your heart uh, you know, when, he, when he's near. But the enemy, it consumes them. So, so it is. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. That's what's important. Do you have the victory over him, the beast? That's to say, Satan. It's important because if you do, this is what you're doing. And over his image and over his mark, that means all the things that he participates in, in Revelation 13, meaning the end times. All those things, you have the victory over that. He's not going to deceive you. And over the number of his name, you know the, what 666 means. It's the six seal, six trump, and six dial. That means he appears here on earth before the true Messiah returns. Uh, and um, on, stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. That's the first one. You're all familiar with the song of Moses. You should be, as many, many times as you've heard me teach it, and you've studied it. Whereby, it says, look, his truth that descends from heaven is distilled as the dew. It's pure. <clears throat> that God protects his own as the apple of his eye, meaning the pupil of the eye. You know, a man pretty well protects that old pupil of the eye. That's why you blink like you do. God protects his own to that degree. And then he goes on and he says, sometimes you get to be a good time Charlie and you forget about me, but vengeance belongeth to me. And, that, and so it does. And God stands and he in that song of Moses, if there's just one of you and a thousand of the others, if God is with you, you've got the victory anyway. You have nothing to worry about. Verse 3, and they sing the song of Moses, okay, and the song of the Lamb, saying. Now, after this word saying, that is the song of the Lamb, okay. It's written. And the song of the Lamb follows the song of Moses, meaning that by the time we are singing this song of the Lamb, it's over. Okay. And it goes following that word saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. It's King of ages, really. Okay. He's the King of all ages. This one the one that was and the one that's going to be forever and ever. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. When does that happen? When do all nations come and worship and glorify God? Have you seen it happen yet? No, you haven't. As a matter of fact, you've got a lot of nations going this way with that God and 
some other god, and if we can't find one there, we'll dream one up. Okay. But that time does come after that seventh trump. Every knee is going to bow. So that fixes the time of this song of the Lamb. It's the conclusion. And after that, I look and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony of heaven was open. And uh, so it was. And there we, there we had those seven last vials. But there's still another song that has a great deal to do with the remembrance of God. And turn with me, if you would, to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, and let's talk about Zacharias, remembered of God. And this is the, Zacharias is the same as the equivalent of the Hebrew Zachariah, okay? Both meaning remembered of God. In other words, God remembers, God knows. Verse 14 of chapter 1, uh, uh, verse 13, And the angel said unto him, this is Gabriel speaking to him, Fear not, Zacharias, for the pr thy prayer is heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Well, there wasn't a John in his family. Okay. But here we have this particular John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Right? Day one. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That was his duty. It would have come to pass, but... They beheaded him. As it's written in Matthew 11, they refused John the Baptist. But Elijah never died, the true Elijah. And you notice it said he came in the spirit of Elijah, not that he was Elijah. For Elijah returned to the Father long, long ago. But that message does continue. John... After that was done, he kind of doubted Gabriel. He said, whoa, my wife's going to conceive. I'm an old man. And he doubted. And Gabriel struck him dumb. He couldn't open his mouth until the child was born. And naturally, Mary conceived during that time. And just as he got his voice back, the Holy Spirit touched him. And it's a real special thing to scholars, okay? Let me share it with you. Verse 68, well, 67, let's start. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to know who's doing this. Our father is. And prophesied, saying, verse 68, blessed. Now, I want you to hold it right there. Because this isn't blessed that usually would translate happy. This word blessed is different in the manuscripts. It is eulogy, or even in the Latin, benedictus. So it's the benediction, it's the last song. And so it is called by scholars the Song of Zacharias. It's a song that slips and fits in between that you need to be real aware of. Because it's God's promise of protection and action, and even in a sense what you're supposed to be doing in, to bridge that gap to take the place of that. Let's, let's, the Holy Spirit speaking through him, and this is a eulogy. It's the closing. Okay. Remembered of Yah. He, he hasn't forgotten. And then we read that word blessed. Check it out for yourself. You'll have fun. Be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Started with old John, okay, in the spirit of Elijah. And, of course, the Christ child, 69. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. 
all down through the ages, all the truth, all the prophets, and even if you would, the, go- the teachers of the gospel, all down through the ages, that truth, he didn't hold it back from us. But you did have to dig for it a little bit. But why? To show that you were interested. To show that you wanted to know. That you wanted to seek. And when you seek, you do find. Otherwise, hey, bye. You know, nobody's going to worry about you if that's what you want to do. Bye. It's so long, Charlie. We're down to the rough stuff here. And you've got to be fortified and ready. You've got to be awake. You can't go to sleep on watch. Well, I'll just rest a while. Do something else as well. By too late, Charlie, you missed the boat. So we come to that time when you have to take this very serious. Our Father has spoken. He's been in control since the beginning of ages, and he's going to continue that way. Verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. This is the prophecy of God. That's a promise. But I just worry so much. Well, then you're done. Okay. That's a promise from God. Pro- what kind of promise? I will save you from our enemies and from the hands of all those that hate us. You don't have to worry about it. He's in charge. He's in control. Do you love him? Do you trust him? Or, or maybe you'd rather listen to man. Okay? Now, that'll get you somewhere. All you got to do is turn your television on tonight and listen to man for a while. And see, how, see where you go, okay? Or you can't listen to your father. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. That's the song of Zacharias, remembered of Yah. It's God's love and promise just pouring forth from this song. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, it's still good. Okay. When God makes an oath, it's an oath made. It's a promise kept that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. I want you to let that sink in real good, because there's a time coming some could fear a little bit. You don't have to. You don't have to. You can serve him without fear if you just plug in. Trust him. Listen to this song. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Uh, that's uh, how, how often is That's every day. That's not skipping a day here and there. Or he's with us every other day. No, he's with us every day. No, no, no holidays. He's always with us. And thou, child, now the subject turns to John, okay? And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. 77, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. What qualifies a person for that? Remission of sins. Well, how do you get remission of sins? You repent. And you're, that's your ticket. You're in good standing when you truly do that. You can't con him. Can't fool him. Can't deceive him. But when you love him, don't worry, it shows through. Through the tender mercy of our God. Do you understand that? He's not a God of hate. He's a God of love. He's a father of love. Whereby the day spring from on high that visited us. What is this word day spring? Interesting word. Well, it's anatole. And you, you will all recognize it from the Hebrew, zamak. It means branch. But the very branch itself has come. The branch of Almighty God. And many prophets and prophecies are tied to that very verse in the song of Zacharias. The coming of the branch. Okay, that's what the, the day spring meaning. It's um, it uh, it's the branch that comes early, and he does just in time, not because he's always with us. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet, to guide our feet, brother, 
under the way of peace, and he can do that. You know, don't, when your life gets all twisted and in turmoil, you need to stop and reset your meter, okay? You need to just, just relax a moment and let your feet find their way back to peace, which is to say Christ and his promises, his words, his prophecies. What, what, what has he told us in this song of Zacharias? Remember it of Yah. Remember it of our Father. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to protect you day and night, every day. Well, you don't have to fear anybody or anyone as long as you use common sense. That's what he's telling you. He means it, it is written, and so it is. I can guarantee you uh, from many years of serving him, it's true. Okay. Absolutely. Verse 80, and the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the desert till the days of his showing unto Israel. Now, of course, we know that they crucified Christ, who was the branch. They beheaded John, because it wasn't time. Why? Prophecy had to be fulfilled, Psalms 22, the crucifixion, to, to, to set that shedding of blood in place that we were talking about earlier today. And to put it in place whereby it's for your benefit. But, you see, you've had every point stating, this child is going to lead and prepare a way. And that was the prophecy concerning even the child. Well, who is that written? There, there's a scripture about that somewhere. And then, if we're to pay attention to the song of Zacharias, it must tell us in that teaching, that prophecy, about today, about what's happening. Well, if my memory doesn't fail me, it just happens to not at this time. Isaiah chapter 40, turn there with me. And here you have the words of that prophet. That prophet is God speaking. He's still speaking to you. And the comfort is still headed in your direction. The promise is still in your direction. Chapter 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. You know, Father's always comforting us if you're letting. That's why he even sent the comforter. Okay. So that you would have something to lean on. I don't know how you doing. How you doing? Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. That's Yahweh Shalom, the city of peace. And cry unto her that her warfare, that's to say her hardships, is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. She's going to get corrected big time, okay? And, and God's going to see to it, all right? Uh, Jerusalem founded by the Jebusites, um, and called Jebus at that time. Filthy place. Really was. David conquered it, took it over, cleaned it up. And it's God's favorite place in the world. Ezekiel 16 documents that. That's where his eternal temple is going to be established. He loves it. Okay. Verse 3, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Remember that God, he's returning, friend, and that family is falling in place that is providing that way. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Has that happened yet? No, it hasn't, but it's going to. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. It's going to happen. Has it happened yet? No, it hasn't. All flesh never sees anything up to this point. But don't worry, it's going to. All flesh shall see him. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodness 
thereof is as the flower of the field. Now, I want you to notice, this wasn't the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. This is a different voice speaking here. You've got to pick up on that. Well, who is it in the voice of? It's the voice of Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. He's going to do the answering here for a little bit. Verse 7, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. Man is so fragile, so weak. That's why that when the Spirit of God comes your way, it's got to pick you up. And if you love him, it will. He'll always stand with you. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of God shall stand forever. You want to remember that. That's why studying this word is so very, very important, especially in this generation. You'll never find a time that the word is not more necessary than in this generation. There are so many deceivers in this world. And yet, you're very fortunate. You're blessed. Because you have the word of God. O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up and be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. He's coming, friend. And you're going to be able to say, There he is. And I don't know, I hope you're in that crowd. Because if you're not, I know what crowd you'd probably be in, and that's not good. You have to believe and know he is returning. And that time marches on. The hourglass is tilted. The sands of time are coming through. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, he, his reward is with him, and his work before him, and he can cut it. He can cut it, and he does reward. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and he shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. He is so precious, so gentle, so loving, that when you love him, he's going to take care of you. I don't care how time, how tough the times get, he's going to reach down and protect you and your family leading you and directing you. It's coming. You've lived it. You're in that generation of the fig tree. And you really need to be a watchman. Watchman, do not go to sleep on watch. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with the span, or comprehend, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure? and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills and balance, nobody that he has. He knows every star in heaven. He knows all the earth. He, the compass means the very circle thereof, the orbit in which it sits. He placed it here. So he certainly will not have any difficulty in arranging what happens here upon it. When he put the whole thing here. <clears throat> Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? <clears throat> what a laugh that would be, huh? What a joker it would be that would think he could teach God something. And yet you will have people that like to do their own writings when they've already got the Word of God. What, what's wrong with that picture? What is wrong with that picture? God's word never changes. It doesn't have to be written again. <clears throat> Translated into different languages? Yes. But the same message from the same Father. With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Who, who taught God common sense? He's the originator of common sense. And common sense anymore is a commodity that's kind of difficult to come by, you know. Because you, you can have absolutely, uh, I have noticed, 
you can have some person, but I, I want you to note that this man is ruining this globe. Okay. Now, now remember, God put it here, okay? God intends to live here. But man is telling you, you're destroying the planet. It's getting hotter and hotter. They're thinking about hell, I think. I think that's what they're thinking about. But what what was real funny, they sent an exhibition up north to document that it's it's getting hotter. And they had one man that got froze to death and they had to fly the whole bunch out. God promises in the great book of Genesis, we'll always have winter and we'll always have summer. We'll always have hot. We'll always have cold. He placed it here. He made it. He knows exactly what he's doing. And he will not let man destroy it. Even if we have the atomic and nuclear weapons, God's not going to let it be destroyed. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. The whole, he taketh up the isles is a very little thing. It all means very little to our Father as far as control is concerned. He can cut it. He can handle it. But I've just got so much to worry about with you poor thing. That's sad. Because Father's telling you here in this song of Zacharias, through this one crying in the wilderness, John and Elijah, that you don't have anything to worry about. God's on the throne, and he's telling you exactly what he intends to do and what you have to concern yourself with. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. There's not enough there to make a sac- true sacrifice to God. He could, he, like I say, he, he created the universe. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Tuhu in the Hebrew without form even. It doesn't mean anything to him. Do you know what does mean something to him? You do. That's why he placed this beautiful planet here, so you'd have a home, so it would be as it is, and so he could love you and provide for you. To whom, then, will you liken God? Question. Or what likeness will you compare uh, unto him? There's no comparison. The workman melteth. You know, this is what man does now, okay? The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it uh, over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished, as poor folks, that uh, he hath no oblation, chooseth a tree that will not rot. That means he gets some good hardwood. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. In other words, it's a chunk of wood. It can't move. The only place it would really be good is if you put it in the fireplace and warm by it. Okay. This, it's Father's own making. Man cannot build his own religion and have it blessed. Okay, let me, may I hasten to add. Have you not known, question, have you not heard, has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? Not the foundation of this earth age, but the one even before. Have you ever been taught about that first earth age and what happened here, the dinosaurs, the mighty mammoth? And, and the fact that there was lagoon and and uh, buttercups all the way up to the tundra of the North Pole. What a beautiful place this earth is under the canopy of the firmament of Almighty God as it was before he started correcting man. You know, if man thinks man's destroying the earth, it's God that does the uh, He's got the damper. Okay. I don't know how many of you know what a damper is, okay, but... In other words, he, he's got the heat control right in his hand, okay? And um, and he knows how to handle it. You have to know from the foundations of the world, 
He's in charge. Okay. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And that's the, you consider the Milky Way. That's not exactly what it's talking about here, but it'll do. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. And so it is when you walk out at night and you look up in the quiet of the night at the beautiful heavens. He knows every star by name. Every one. He created them. And in their beauty and control, he created them for you to have a home under them. To enjoy them. That bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. He's in charge. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. Does that remind you of anything? Song of Zechariah, Jesus Christ walking into the village, and he blessed the fig tree, okay, and it withered, meaning that generation, you didn't look for any fruit on it, if it's the bad fig, because he's already going to blow on it. He's going to take care of business, and that was the whole lesson in that fig tree thing, bringing you to this point that God will do as he pleases. He's in charge, and he loves you. His prime uh, thought is to establish his kingdom here, and you are his kingdom, that is to say, the dominion. He's the king, you're the dominion, and how he does love you. That fig tree, it's not going to take root when he's ready. It's not. Okay. Did that fig tree have fruit on it the next day? No, it withered overnight. Okay. When God's ready, that's it. To whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? You're not going to find one. Okay. He's our Father. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things? that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by name, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power. Not one faileth. They're all there. Do you understand we're talking about your father? Do you understand that he's the one that did this? Again, take the time sometime when you're in a dark place where you can really see the night and look up. Every one of them he named every one of them he put in place. Even when he put this big chunk of dirt in place. When he put the moon as it is and Mars as it is. And I just wonder if he could take care of me. Now that's kind of silly, isn't it? I mean, he takes care of things real good. And we're reading his promises here concerning that voice crying from the wilderness. That voice that John would have been but now Elijah himself must return to bring that to pass as it's written in the great book of Malachi in the last verse. Okay, and um, verse 27. Why sayest thou, o Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Or, or, my judgment is just passed over. He's never fair with me. You get exactly what you got coming to you. Okay? Well, but it's hard. Well, then straighten up your act. Okay? Get yourself together. Talk to yourself. Take inventory. Because God always judges rightly. God is always fair. Do you remember the song of the Lamb that I started this lecture with? He's always righteous and only He is holy. He knows. And He's always fair. So don't... Don't try to, in, in the first place, if you're hiding something from God, you're doing wrong anyway. Because a smart person knows you can't hide anything from God. Okay. You can't. Well, I've been bad and I just hate to tell him. He knows. 
He already knows. So there's no need holding back on repenting or trying to keep a secret from him. <clears throat> hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not? He, he doesn't give up. He doesn't get tired. Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He knows everything. He gives power to the faint. Does he to you? And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Plug in, my friend. If you want the energy of the end times, if you want to be really accelerated in learning, in living, in joy, plug in. Your family, he's your father. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall on their own. Okay, they will. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. There's the song. And there's the cry of the voice from the wilderness. And I made very careful that you saw that it was God's voice that was doing the talking through most of that 40th song, uh, uh, chapter of Isaiah. That's God's promise. And you need not worry in these end times and let people shake you all up. You're blessed. God loves you. If you let him, do you keep wanting to go the other way? Hey, enjoy it, friend, because you're going to get your gourd dumped. Okay. Big time. He's going to corral you and shake you down. Why? Well, he loves you. What do you do to your children? What do you do to your children when you know they're doing something that's going to hurt them? You say no, no, and then you'll say no, no about one more time, and about the third time, it's time for a little bit of correction. Well, God corrects also, not because He loves you, and. He will strengthen you, though. He will hold you up. He will give you the knowledge and the ability and the understanding to conquer. Now, let's go back to this day spring a moment. That was part of this. We're right near Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 6, Jeremiah 23. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is, and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Now drop back to verse 5. Okay. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Zanach. Okay. That's that day star. That's that day spring. That righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Did you hear what it said? That branch is going to execute judgment, what is right. It's right upon us, beloved. You know, all you got to do is just open your eyes and look. It's here. You're living it. You're in it. Verse 7, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Oh, but you don't understand. He parted the Red Sea. He sunk uh, Pharaoh's chariots right out in the middle and grounded them. They're not going to talk. You know what's going to be a bigger talk about than that? Well, I don't know. Let's read it and see. But, this is what they'll say, But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. And that's as it is. That's coming. Well, has that happened yet? Of course it hasn't. We still talk about the great delivery from the... You've heard of the Ten Commandments when it was given. The Red Sea parted. Now, what is greater than that is when Christ returns, that seventh trump, and opens that 
east gate to Jerusalem and takes care of the enemy, does what that fig tree should have had from the beginning. It's going to get it. And that is coming to pass. That's the branch. Turn on with me to... Let, let's, we, we've got the song of Zechariah, then we should go to Zechariah. The minor prophet, Zechariah, next to the last book of the Old Testament. Whoop, I got Habakkuk. That won't work. Chapter 3 okay, of the great book of Zechariah, meaning remember to God. He remembers, friend. He knows right where you are. He's in charge. He's in control. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, verse 7, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. There were angels, of course. Hear now, O Joshua. This Joshua is Yeshua. Okay. It's the equivalent of Jesus, and it even translated Jesus in the New Testament in one place. And the, the high priest, he's the only high priest, king of kings, lord of lords. Thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. And there again is that branch, the, the, the rod that budded, the field that leads, the priest that is priest of priests forever after the order of Melchizedek. Do you know what he's got with him? For from before the stone that I have laid upon Yeshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. That's the seven thousand of God's elect. Behold, I will engrave the grading thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. You know what day that is? That's the seventh trump, okay? In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Reason being, after the seventh trump, guess who's going to be here? God's children. Well, where's everybody else? At the end of the millennium, they take a trip. They were worried about this earth getting too hot. They're going to find out what hot is. But he has given you this song of Zechariah. He has given you this promise. This is really a song of encouragement. That Father's on the throne. And he's telling you exactly what he will do. But you know these prophecies, though, of what's going on in this world by these newscasters is so frightening. Well, then don't listen to them. Okay. If, if you're not smarter than they are, you shouldn't listen to them until you kind of get in the Word and understand they don't know come here from sick of anyway. All they're doing is trying to start a fight so they can sell press time and advertisements. Okay. You got that? All they want to do is stir trouble. Well, who do they take that after? <clears throat> well, let me see. Who's the greatest agitator of all times? It's not too difficult to find out. If, listen, I'm going to tell you, if you go out towards the chicken house and you smell a skunk, if you smell one, there's probably one there. Okay, so we're we're in that generation that you want to be real careful. You know the reason I'm telling that is my my uh, this gentleman over here drug in his old big bush hog to hook it up and clean it up, and he had an old sow and five young, five young. They it was their home. <laughs> They were quite at home, even while he was working on it, until he finally saw some little beady eyes looking at him down there. Anyway, it's that, that's the way it is, and we'll let that be a voice, an object lesson. 
There's a lot of things wrong in this world, but it's not you. So don't get sucked into it, okay? You're a child of God. God loves you. And God blesses you. God has made these promises to you. Don't worry, little child. You know, if you can't even walk or if you've got little ones, I'll pick you up and I'll carry you and them both. Okay. I'm going to take care of you. All I require is that you love me, that you do your best, that you follow me. So I felt that for this fall fellowship, that this song of Zachariah, this is what scholars call it, okay, that it's, it should be sung.